Hi, and thanks for watching. This is my first uh, overnight trip of 2021, shot in May. Um, due to the COVID restrictions, haven't been able to get out until this point. So this video is an overnighter wild camping in the Mendip Hills. So if that's your thing, wild camping, bike packing, or Brompton bikes, you're in the right place. Sit back and hopefully you'll enjoy the video. Right, so I, I just wanted to stop and show you this. Um, there's the diagram showing the curve. And there we are, the curve. It's uh, a, a prehistoric monument. I don't know if it's Bronze Age or, or actually earlier. Um, behind the church there, this is Stanton Drew Village, Stanton Drew Church. Behind the church there is another large stone circle. Uh, or two actually and the, the biggest one is actually bigger than Stonehenge the stones aren't so impressive they're more like these and falling down but um, yeah if you look at the bike there it gives you an idea of the scale of that so the cove at Stanton Drew just a little bit of interest on the journey Right, so there we go, Blagden, two miles in that direction. The the line of hills you can see there, there's the Mendip Hills. That's the main ridge of the hills that goes through. And uh, the bike here is just over there. So um, I'm heading that way and up over the hill to the right, um, which is the highest point there. Now, it's a good climb up from here. It's not exactly the Alps. It's not a mountain pass or anything. But what I am going to do, I'm interested to see how far it is. So I've got the Garmin on the bike there. And I'm going to turn that on now. I haven't been using it for navigation or anything. I don't need that. And I'm going to see what the climb is up there. Let's let this van go by. Yeah, I'm going to see what the climb is up there. Um, out of interest for myself more than anything. Whee! My little old legs and this little old bike, that's a long climb. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful day of pick for this, as you can see. Um, wasn't supposed to be doing this today, but my good lady said, um, you've got a hole in the weather, it looks brilliant, why don't you get off? You know you want to. So, here I am. Let's crack on. This shot may be familiar to some of you. If you've seen the video I did last uh, last November, I did a bike packing a bike packing trip this way and camped by uh, Iron Age Hill Fort on uh, Burrington Down, which is very close to where I'm going today. So I thought I'd stop at the same place again on this road just outside of Burrington village and I admire the view because it is something special that's Blagden Lake 
It's called Bladen Lake. It's actually a reservoir, but around these parts they do call them lakes, so Blagden Lake. I'll be paying a visit there on the way back. Went back a different route and down the valley there is where I've come from, the hill. Sort of in the distance there by my finger I've come over that hill. You can't see uh, Chew Valley Lake from here, back past Chew Valley Lake and now up the hill here. And no, you can't see where I'm going. Leads into Burrington. And then uh, forever up and onwards. Let's crack on. So there's the road up out of the village. And believe me, it's a good, it's a good steep road. You can see back down there to Blagden Lake again. And what a beautiful day and a beautiful view it is. They've uh, thought about us and they've, they've popped this bench well, a couple of benches uh, on the not, not not the top of the hill but at this point at the top of the village top of a, a little old quarry here so have a little stop so that's what I'm gonna do I have plenty of time so I'm just gonna stop and drink in that view for a little while and then crack on for the the final ascent this is like um, base camp for the ascent on Blackdown Right, so there we go then, black down. As the sign says, it's in the Mendy Pills area of outstanding natural beauty. It's a site of special scientific interest. There's a scheduled monument or two up there. I'll, uh, I'll show you some of that when we get up there. And it's open access land, um, which in the UK means you can wander across it if you're mm. walking. You don't have to stick to the paths and such. Um, camping is still not allowed. So um, whenever we're wild camping in this country, apart from a couple of places, uh, Dartmoor and part of the um, Lake District, it's, uh, it's actually illegal, but not necessarily enforced. So we'll see how we go. But yeah, black down. There's the sign. But, but the, the walk's not over yet. Oh, the, the ride's not over yet. The walk's about to begin. I don't know if you can see that there. Climbed 195 meters so far. Now, if I just take you around the corner here, that's the path up. Now, it is a designated cycle route, but as you can see from that, I mean, that's the beginning of it and that's the easy bit. Um, it's, it's mountain bikes only, so for me, it's going to be hiker bike from here on in. If you're not familiar with the term hiker bike, that basically means I'm pushing it from here to the top. I'll leave the Garmin on um, and see, as I said, that's 195 metres. So we'll see uh, we'll see how much further it is to the top. This is this should be fun. Right, so that's the trail I've just come up and we're now come out onto the down itself I'll show you up there in a second uh, but just to show you on there uh, black down uh, this is black down Burrington ham at the other side and Burrington Coombe is a gorge through the middle there and last year in November I mentioned on the way up the hill there I camped here just by Burrington Camp on that side of the hill and today I'm following up to this point here which is the highest point in the uh, Mendip Hills at 325 meters above sea level so that's where I'm heading I'm actually just here now just come out onto the bottom of the down so just to give you a feeling of what that looks like You 
it opens up to the down there. And my route today is straight up there. So uh, as I say, it's hiker bike up to the top there. Now, there are some uh, semi wild ponies on here, Exmoor ponies or Dartmoor ponies. I'm not sure what the difference is in the breed or whatever, but uh, yeah, there's some wild ponies up here, so a little bit of luck we might see those. Look at that sky, absolutely beautiful. I couldn't have picked a better day. made it here we are and there's the trig point at the top this mound that he's on is actually a bronze age burial mound i think the rocks have been placed on afterwards um, but there are several of them around here um, two more there as you can see close on another one just down the trail there another one that way and there's one or two more down the bottom. Now another thing of interest here, if you see this this trail and running along the trail there are these mounds. There are these mounds, large mounds and they run all down the trail and again they can't see them so well but they run down that trail as well um, they're not Bronze Age they were actually put there during the Second World War Yielding Studios would you believe laid out a street plan on here and these were lit uh, at night to try and fool the German bombers into thinking this was Bristol in the hope that they'd drop the bombs on here rather than Bristol I'm not sure how successful that was but there we go, a little bit of history for you up here, as I say, it's a, it's a scheduled monument, I think both for the World War II stuff and obviously for the Iron Age remains as well. Um, this chap's just pulled up here, he's got a big pole, I don't know, what, I don't know if it's uh, for a 360 camera or what he's going to do, but look at that view, that is amazing. Yes, um, I can't see the bridge. Oh, I can just make the bridge out. You probably not see it on here, but it's just over there. The bridge over the Seven Bridge there. Um, coming down towards Porty's Head. Clevedon. And then down there is the Bristol Channel. Well, it's all the Bristol Channel. Sorry, down there you might be able to see Linton in the sun is um, Western Supermare. And then you can see the island out in uh, the Bristol Channel there. And then there's a, an outcrop just in from that. That's Breen Point. I did a wild camp there um, last September, I believe. A beautiful, beautiful spot. Um, but this is spectacular. Now, this is where I'm at. As you can see, there's a little bit of a, a trail there. And I'm going to pitch the tent just down there, away from this spot. Um, unlikely anybody's going to be up here as it starts to get later, but um, if anybody does come through, this is the way they're likely to come through. The main trail there, down the path, and out the other side. So, yeah, beautiful day, beautiful evening. A little bit of a breeze, as I say, it's going to be chilly but um, I'm prepared for that so yeah I will uh, I'll get some I think I'll get some food I don't want to put the tent up straight away or get some food on I, I don't like to put the tent up too early as I say not, not strictly supposed to be here but and they have been clamping down on wild camping lately so we'll see Almost forgot the Garmin.
that clear there we go 310 meters of ascent in 3.46 miles so about 100 meters a mile Three, 310 meters ascent like I said it's not an alpine pass but um, it's pretty good for me um, just before I uh, set up I will just say this has been a big success um, assuming it's waterproof it's sold as a dry bag so it should be um, 20 litre capacity and it was 7.99 from Aldi um, brilliant it's got a couple of loops here one at either side which are perfect for just f one, these loops one at either side which are perfect for just um, feeding the bungees through off that and then the tie there just straight onto the saddle rails so that's giving me a 20 litre capacity at the bike which is I think I said earlier is exactly what I needed to get my three season um, sleeping bag in there so in there is the sleeping bag the um, tent and the pillow so that's most of the bedroom tent pegs on the front um, that's my selfie stick come tripod um, and everything else the cooking gear and everything obviously in the tea bag there so it's all good so this is where I'm pitching just here um, you can see the, the trig point just there I don't know if you can make out there's a pole there there's a guy up there set up his uh, his, his uh, long wave I assume it's long wave radio up here gets the best signal yeah so I'm pitching here that bit of grass there's my pitch and that's my view it's not too shabby is it fantastic look at that get set up shortly and um, hopefully will not get um, interrupted or disturbed Brilliant. Right, so as I said, there are ponies up here. Exmoor or Dartmoor ponies. Whatever, there's, there's quite a herd of them. Didn't expect there to be so many. They've come quite close to the tent. There's the tent up there. It stands out quite a lot from this angle. Um, <laughs> I made it nice and stealthy from um, from the high point up there. But um, from this angle, it's uh, it kind of stands out. I, I put it there because I've got a good view, as you can see. Sorry, as you can see. Okay, so it's snap time. Keeping it simple again. I've got curry and rice. I, I, I love these things. They're dead easy and tasty. Yeah, I've gone a bit strange. I've got Mexican rice and an Indian Balti curry. But, eh ho. We've got the jet boil there so it's all going in the jet boil pan I'll eat it from there so just the one pan to uh, to clean and worry about um, very simple process Let's drop the bolty sauce in first get that warm in mix the rice in perfect spicy meal for this perfect evening Right, so for anybody that's not seen my setup before, here we go. It's a little bit different anyway because it's um, a winter setup. So at the bottom, I've got the uh, the foil mat there, or the foil backing, just for a little bit of in extra insulation. 
Um, this is new, the Carrymore Explorer um, self-inflating sleeping mat. Um, the other one I got is um, no insulation at all. So this one does offer a little bit more, still on the cheaper end, but it offers um, a bit more insulation. So hopefully those two tonight are going to help keep me warm. The pillow is just a little decathlon pillow there and the sleeping bag tonight is a planet 250 van gogh uh, three season bag um, the comfort rating there is two degrees and minus three is its limit um, the forecast tonight is three degrees um, but up here i suspect it's going to be a little bit colder so we might get some frost i have got the uh, silk liner there, Euro white liner so I'll be in that as well and um, I'll have a couple of layers of clothing on so hopefully I should keep warm um, that in there this knee's just tidying away but um, the tea bag goes there that'll be in the tea bag shortly and that goes there and then in the vestibule of the tent there is the bike and the other bag and uh, when I close up, that's it, it's all in there, tucked away nicely. Um, the sun's going to be setting soon, so I shall enjoy one of my favourite brews, Tiny Rebel Club Tropica now, it used to be Tropicana, they had to change the name. Um, but anyway, it's the same drink, and I can drink that and look over towards Monmouth in, in sunny Wales there um, as I enjoy it tiny rebel brewed in Monmouth so cool I'm gonna have a little walk round there's a a chap up there well, in fact there are lots of chaps up there by the trig point it looks like a, a lot of mountain bikers you probably can't pick them out but there's another chap up there on his uh, CB radio. He's got a large mast up there. Obviously, I just point around and he's uh, tuning into that. So I, I had a little chat with him earlier, nice bloke. I'm going to nip back up there, I think. Have another little chat. Come back, see if I can film that sunset and uh, enjoy my brew while I'm doing that. There we go. I, I hope you enjoyed that sunset as much as I did. Um, what time is it now? Sort of 20 to 9. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a last little walk around. Just enjoy the last of this beautiful scenery before it goes dark. And then, uh, yeah, get myself wrapped up and tucked up for bed. Just had some mountain bikers go through. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they're the last. Um, of the evening but uh, we'll see and <laughs> they, they did they did come down this path at the back of me there right past the tent which uh, I wasn't expecting um, I know sometimes some people go mountain biking uh, in the night in the dark um, that, that gave me a fright <laughs> that and the horses the ponies came by they were whinnying but um, yeah, no, I'm sure I'm going to have a fantastic night up here. Um, looking forward to it. So I'll sign out at that for the evening and I'll, uh, I'll catch you in the morning. Night night campers. Good morning. Well, this for me has to be the best time of the day, I think, on a camp like this. It's just after 5am. So it's, it's an early start, which um, is to be expected. But, you know, 
I can be pretty confident I've got the place to myself and uh, that's what I wake up to. You, I don't know if you can pick the dawn chorus up there or not but it's um, it's not a bad sound to wake up to. Lovely view again obviously out to the Bristol Channel and Wales there. Those lights there, that's um, Western Supermare. A little bit hazy at the moment, but it's a clear sky. And somewhere in that direction, in about 25 minutes, the sun's going to rise. So I'm going to get myself up there to the trig point and um, see if I can catch a sunrise before breakfast. Might just do myself a coffee to start. Little bit of a problem there getting that lit. Hopefully, be okay. Just drinking it all in before I drink the coffee. And then I'm going to perch this on the top of there and the sun is going to be coming up just over there I think. There's uh, that's that Chew Valley Lake or Blagden Lake? I think that's Chew Valley Lake. Yeah, that's Chew Valley Lake. Beautiful. Right, so we've had a brilliant sunrise and a brilliant sunset. Can't ask for more. One last panorama round with the camera, just to soak it all in, keep the memories. And uh, I shall be packing up and on my way very shortly. Absolutely gorgeous morning, bit chilly, but um, nothing to complain about. I'll, uh, Catch you again later. Brilliant. So there's the bike uh, packed up and ready to go. It's approaching 6.30. Um, that was the campsite um, obviously I'm a fully paid up member of the Leave No Trace Club I, I can't even say I've flattened the grass today because it's all pretty flat anyway so that's it 
that's it there's my path back home so uh, we'll, we'll crack on um, yeah I think I'm gonna sign off at that um, I'll not share the journey on with you I haven't got a lot of time this morning I do need to get back so I'm gonna crack on back home that's my route home pretty much the route that I came by through uh, Chew Valley Lake and just see Blagden Lake down the bottom there been a brilliant camp really enjoyed it um, it's been a long time coming um, but well worth the wait and uh, so pleased to have got out here and had such a, a perfect night and morning absolutely brilliant hope you enjoyed that as usual if you did please consider giving us a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you'd like to see more um, thanks for watching